Uh, g'day, comrade subscribers, or bonjour, or iorana, as you say in Tahiti. Something different today, uh, ordinateur français. So we've got a French computer, Thompson MO5. So it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, so it's got uh, it's got a um, Spectrum-like keyboard. Apparently it was designed, it's a cut-down version of the TO series from Thompson. Um, 6809, I think, which is what what they use in the Dragon and the um, TRS-80 or something, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, so it's something something a bit different. It's got a cartridge port quite right there. It's got an edge connector right there. And um, two interfaces on the side. That looks like a uh, looks like a light pen. So that's magnetophone cassette. I'm not sure about that. That looks like a light a light pen, but I assume it's joystick. So yeah, that's that on the side. Ooh, 17 volts DC. That's interesting. Fabric conference. So pretty simple on the back. Looks like something's supposed to connect in, or possibly can connect into the back here, with these two uh, two key locks there. I don't know too much about the computer. Um, like I said, it's got the edge edge connector there. Uh, so there are, is available on GitHub some uh, memory expansions, and some um, so you can stick a memory expansion card in there, and then you can. Um, uh, SD interface you can plug in and into there and of course with the Euro obsession with bloody SCART <laughs> we've got a SCART cable hardwired into it so um, mm, annoying but we can work around it so it came with this power supply which looks to be a kind of a modern replacement um, so this here it's 12 volts output. So we'll see. It's got an inline switch. So we'll see if 12 volts is enough. Um, yeah, so SCART. I do have a way around that. Um, I think I might open it up first. We'll have a quick look. Um, but I was thinking like, you know, sticking in a good old Soviet 5-pin DIN to get the RGB out. But uh, let's see, I think let's, let's open it first. It's simple, just four. Get my earphone out of the way. Phillips head screws. Something a bit different. Okay, is that enough? We will come out. Looks like it. Okay, well, okay, very, very short little ribbon cable there for the keyboard. Looks pretty cheaply made. Um, let me pull this out, hopefully, and try and remove the keyboard without breaking it. Okay, the keyboard is removed, so it does look like would be nice to give it a clean so it does look like we can unscrew it here and get the membrane out and give the case a good clean give the keys a good clean so we'll look at doing that but here's the inside um, what was that button initial program apparently initial program all right so Cool. Um, pretty standard for a Western computer, I guess, of the time. I guess we've got a regulator there uh, to drop the volt input voltage down. Don't know why it says 17 volts in. Uh, it seems rather excessive. Oh, okay, so the SCART cable there has got... Oh, okay, so you could actually remove the SCART cable remove it and replace it I guess um, oh yeah of course I could just 
cut this off and then um, just put a, uh, a DIN plug on the other end, couldn't I? Or a DIN socket. So, but that's not, not to worry about that. I'll be able to use that. So, rather boring actually compared to the Soviet, uh, Soviet boards we've been looking at, isn't it? Uh, we can have a close up look. So I guess that does all the magic. Uh, I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know which one's the 6809. I think it might be that one. That's the other socketed chip. Um, got memory here, by the looks of it. Over here, over here, 245, so we've got some buffers. Yep, all pretty standard, so I'm guessing this is this is a 7805, then we could replace it to save a bit of power. Um, I don't know if that comes off. Looks like some sort of clip there. Um, everything looks okay. Nothing looks out at all. <laughs> okay, we do have a okay, a nail file. So that was located there. I don't know if that's for any specific requirement. We'll see. Doesn't work. We'll try putting the nail file back in. Um, but yeah, so how am I going to solve the SCART problem? So to work around the SCART problem, I do actually have a UK TV, a Sony TV I bought in the UK and brought it back with me. <laughs> have not let the wife let me throw it out because it's a CRT. But this I bought in Australia, so it's a Sony RDR HX900 DVD, uh, DVD recorder, hard drive recorder. Um, so that was that, it seemed, feels like it was a brief time um, before HD TV came out, or digital TV came out. So this is an SD tuner, uh, free-to-air tuner, that... Um, Rather than recording on VHS tapes, you could record on a DVD or you could record on the hard drive. Uh, but it comes with SCART in. So we've got SCART input, we've got component out, we've got composite out. Um, yeah, so it's a DVD player, DVD recorder, and also a hard drive recorder. So you can actually record on the internal hard drive, which is pretty cool. So I have um, used this to um, digitise um, VHS tapes oh, 15, 15 odd years ago. So I should be able to plug the MO5 into this and then what output do I want? So if I want to use my GBS8200 uh, like I normally do, it does actually have composite in. Uh, not composite in, sorry, um, RGB input. So I could do that, do that, and then that'll give me VGA output. Or I could just use the composite output, um, and that way I can, uh, I could record it. I'll just, well, let's see. Let's see, I'll plug all this in, and I'll see if it works. Okay, so I've got the... MO5 connected to my Sony DVD recorder via SCART and then I've got the RGB output, whatever it's called, going to my GVSA200 which is then VGA to the screen. So if I power on computer and Nothing. So it should have, it's got basic built in. So it could be that it's not working. Or <laughs> does it really need 17 volts input? Let's power off. Power on. Okay, further investigation required. 